What if Count Dooku never turned to the dark side? That is our story for today, and if you want to be part of a lightsaber and Lego set giveaway once we hit 50,000 subscribers, make sure to hit the subscribe button and stick around to the end of the video to find out how to enter, and let's get right into it. Our story begins on Coruscant inside of the Jedi Temple hangar. Dooku was here looking past the seemingly endless traffic and into the stars. Somewhere among these stars, Qui-Gon and his apprentice Obi-Wan were traveling to Naboo, where Dooku knew they would be facing the Sith Apprentice, Maul. And Dooku knew he had two paths to choose from. He could go help his former Padawan, or he could continue his descent into darkness by going to Sidious. As Dooku stood here, he reflected on the past couple years. After growing tired of the Jedi involvement with the Senate, and his homeworld of Sereno needing his help, Dooku left the Order to become the Count of Sereno. He still did visit the temple quite often, but mostly for nefarious acts. He'd caused the death of a great friend in sifo then took over the clone army program on Kamino. He was very close to being a true Sith, but today he was more conflicted than ever. Dooku closed his eyes and searched the Force for answers, and as he did, he was granted some sort of vision from the future. Dooku saw Maul, Obi-Wan, and Qui-Gon dueling, and Dooku then saw Maul stab Qui-Gon as Obi-Wan screamed in horror. Dooku opened his eyes, and he knew that he was seeing just a potential future. Now he must simply decide between saving Qui-Gon or joining the Sith. And deep inside the Sith layer on Coruscant, Darth Sidious was waiting for any communication with Dooku. And the longer he waited, the more he realized the truth, and he knew that perhaps he will need to aid Maul. He had just become Chancellor, then killed his master Plagueis. If Dooku was having any second thoughts, he would need to be taken care of quickly. Sometime later, inside of the plasma refinery, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi battled the Sith Lord Maul, the first Sith Lord to show himself in over 1,000 years, and the Council only sent these two Jedi to handle it. As the three fighters moved across the bridges of the refinery, Maul kicked Qui-Gon in the face and went for a lethal stab on Obi-Wan, but he was suddenly thrown extremely hard into the far wall. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan both took a moment to recover, as someone came in between the two of them, igniting a blue lightsaber. Dooku was here, and Qui-Gon exchanged a welcoming nod with his former master. Maul snarled as he saw a third Jedi entering the arena to face him. He didn't know of Dooku's involvement with Sidious, but Dooku did know about Maul, and this would no longer be anywhere close to an even fight. But Maul was too arrogant to consider a retreat, so instead, he ran back towards the three Jedi. Maul's aggressive style did initially push the three Jedi back, but in a matter of a few swings, the combined might of Kenobi, Dooku, and Jin had Maul on the defensive. He was masterful with his dual-sided saber, but he was soon backed up to the ray-shielded door, and he was able to flip backwards, getting into one of the doors as the shield activated, separating him from the Jedi. And now the four of them could only wait, but as they stood here waiting for the shield to open, Maul's eyes suddenly widened in fear, and then surprise, and a moment later, Dooku did the same. He looked at Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, telling them another Sith Lord is approaching. And at the door, a hooded figure slowly stepped into the giant refinery, and with an evil laugh, the Sith Lord bolted at them like a shadow. Dooku told them he will handle this other Sith Lord, and told Qui-Gon and Kenobi good luck before running to meet Sidious. As Dooku reached Sidious, he could hear the lightsabers of Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Maul resume fighting as they were heading into a new room and Sidious ignited two lightsabers, telling Dooku that his decision to betray him will be the final decision he ever makes. And Dooku said that he knows that he must choose the light, no matter how difficult it may be, and he readied himself for battle. Sidious moved in first, but Dooku was ready. Dooku's blue blade moved perfectly through the air, meeting Sidious's red sabers with powerful clashes. The room echoed with the sound of their fierce duel, each strike reverberating off the metal walls all around them. Sidious unleashed a barrage of lightning, but Dooku deflected it as he expected this move, and with a powerful push, he gathered the lightning into his own hands, using a Jedi technique rather than Sith lightning, and pushed Sidious' own lightning back towards him, who had to swiftly dodge to avoid being struck by it. The two of them would continue across the bridges, jumping from one to the other as Sidious was trying to wear Dooku down. He was extremely quick, with his two lightsabers striking at Dooku, Dooku has served his purpose, and now it is time for him to die. They continued to clash sabers, but
but Sidious became only more impressed with Dooku as he matched him move for move. As the battle raged on, Dooku finally found an opening in Sidious' defensives. With a perfect flick of his wrist, Dooku disarmed Sidious, sending both sabers clattering across the floor, down into the depths of the refinery. And now Sidious stared at Dooku, and he tried to flip over him to escape. But Dooku reached up, cutting through the legs of Sidious, and the Dark Lord flopped to the floor with an angry scream. Sidious scrambled to try to get back to his feet, but Dooku plunged his saber through his spine, ripping it apart as Sidious died. Dooku used the force to float his body over the edge, and now the Sith Lord was gone. And Dooku began to notice something else now. The sound of sabers clashing from the other duel had gone silent, and he had a bad feeling. So he turned and ran up to the room behind the ray shields, only to find now that he was too late. He could not prevent the death of Qui-Gon. The young Obi-Wan was holding a dying Qui-Gon in his arms, and Dooku ran over to them, to Qui-Gon, saying that they must get him out of here. But Qui-Gon said it was too late, and as he died, Qui-Gon made Dooku promise that he would train Anakin Skywalker. Qui-Gon knew that Obi-Wan was not ready, Dooku was here, and he could feel that Dooku was still in the light. If he could return to the Order, if he could train Skywalker, then the Chosen One could reach his potential as a Jedi. And so, with the Sith dead, and only Dooku knowing that the Sith was Palpatine, there would be chaos surrounding the Jedi Order and the Republic for many weeks. After the funeral of Qui-Gon Jinn, Dooku would tell the Council everything. He was working with the Sith Lord, but ultimately chose the light in the final moment, never truly succumbing to the dark. Of course, he did kill sifo and help create the clone army to help create a war in the future, but besides all that, he was alright. The Jedi would learn that Palpatine was the Sith Lord, but they would tell the Senate that the Sith killed Palpatine on Naboo as a way to try and gain power before the Jedi stopped the Sith. And with this revelation, the Republic would go on to elect Ainley Team in this new election. Initially, Palpatine was chosen over him, but the Senate went with the comfortable option now, despite rumors that Team may be involved in some heavy corruption. But the Republic would soon recover, while the Jedi Order was making some heavy decisions. Dooku asked to be back into the Order so he could train Anakin Skywalker, the boy from Tatooine. The Council had two choices to make. They could either allow Dooku back in the Order to train Anakin, or they could keep Dooku out of the Order, where he would still train Anakin, without the Council's supervision. Ultimately, the Council would decide that Dooku was allowed back in the Order, although Mace Windu was perhaps the most vocal member against this idea. He didn't trust Dooku, or Anakin for that matter. But Dooku was soon given this good news, and his training of Anakin would soon begin. As for Obi-Wan Kenobi, he was rather devastated by his master's death, but Yoda would take Kenobi under his own wing for a bit, and Kenobi would soon pass the Jedi Trials, becoming a Jedi Knight, and would soon be ready to get his own Padawan in the coming years. He would be okay. And so, for the next ten years, there would be peace in the Republic, and the Jedi Order would remain. But this so-called peace was exactly what Dooku was against. He wasn't against peace itself, just that this peace wasn't true peace. Though his pull to the light side kept him from doing anything truly terrible, he would train Anakin to be a strong, wise Jedi, and soon take Anakin on missions, where Anakin would be exposed to the corruption and the hypocrisy of the Senate. The two of them would go out into the galaxy to resolve planetary issues, only to find that the problems stem from desperate citizens doing whatever they could to get the attention of the governments. Corruption ran deep on so many planets, there was not much the Jedi could do, the people needed help, Dooku was trying his best to show that the Jedi were here for them, but there was truly only so much he could do. Dooku had to deal with the weight of the Republic seemingly falling apart as the rich get richer and the poor get poorer every day, and it seemed as if the Jedi Council was trying to push him further away. Through the years, Dooku and Windu could never regain any trust between the two of them, and so any time Dooku was called into the Council, it was met with animosity rather than serenity. The Council would blame Dooku for this because of his previous involvement with the Sith, and while that was fair, the Council was blind to the fact that Dooku was right about everything. Shoot, the murder was very, very wrong, but his intentions deep down were good, and he just got caught up in the darkness, but found the light in the final seconds. Now he was trying to remain a Jedi, trying to remain in the light, 
and not fall down that dark path again, but the council was not making it easy. Sometimes Dooku would wish that the clones on Kamino were not shut down, as he could feel that civil war was possible. But the civil war would never come, as Chancellor Team was lining the pockets of the Trade Federation, Techno Union, and Banking Clan to keep them in the Republic. There was no separatist force trying to separate them. It was a broken system, and Dooku was losing hope until he noticed something with his Padawan. Anakin was around 19 years old now, and he was very powerful with both the Blade and with the Force. But recently, he'd been disappearing at night, arriving late to training, and overall been very distracted. Dooku wasn't dumb, and he was able to find out that Anakin was spending a ton of time with the Senator of Naboo, Padme Amidala. Of course, the last Senator out of Naboo was a Sith Lord, so she didn't have the easiest path but Padme was one of the only senators that Dooku believed could bring real change to the Republic, and she was spending time with Anakin. This was good, Dooku thought. If the future of the Senate had great relations with the future of the Jedi, then perhaps things could change for the better. And so Dooku would allow this relationship to go on in secret for a long time as he and Anakin continued training. Anakin was set to become a Jedi Knight very soon, but one day, as the two of them were on a mission in the Mid-Rim, they received a faint signal from the planet Kadavo. A Togruta man was sending out a message to the Jedi, begging them for help. The Zagirian slave empire was returning, and they were taking the people of Kadavo away without any resistance. The people required Jedi intervention immediately, as they were sent to the Senate with no luck. Dooku and Anakin called the temple, asking for permission to go to Kadavo, but Windu said they must return to the temple and bring this all to the Senate first. This was very frustrating, as Dooku and Anakin wanted to go help the people now, but they listened to Windu, returning to the temple. This was a very sore subject for Anakin, and he really wanted to help the people of Kadavo against these slavers. So the two Jedi would return to the temple, and they would find most of the Jedi Council members actually in the main hall, rather than the council chambers. Dooku and Anakin decided that this was good, as perhaps they could get more Jedi on their side for some of this. They marched towards the council members and quickly demanded that the Jedi be allowed to go to Kadavo. But once more, Windu said they will be speaking to the Senate to seek permission to intervene with whatever is going on with Kadavo. But now Anakin blurted out that there is no time. The people need their help. He didn't understand why the Jedi couldn't just go right now. It felt as if Windu was holding them back, like he truly didn't trust them. And they knew he didn't trust them, but right now was not the time for petty disagreements. Windu simply barked back that Anakin will understand when he is older. Dooku did not like this, and so he told Windu that he is taking Anakin and any other Jedi who want to come with to save the people of Kadavo. Many Jedi were gathering around them now as this argument was playing out, and in a booming voice, Windu told Dooku to stand down as they serve the Senate and must wait for their approval. These words sent a cold chill down Dooku's spine. Long ago, on a mission with Qui-Gon to rescue the son of a senator, Dooku found out how badly people could suffer under the corruption of the Republic. And in that mission, the senator told Dooku that the Jedi serve the Senate. But he was wrong. And Windu was wrong. Dooku stared down Windu and ignited his blue lightsaber, telling Windu that he is wrong. The Jedi serve the people of this Republic. And now nearly every Jedi in the temple was watching as Dooku stood here, lightsaber ignited, waiting to see what happens next. And Windu grabbed his own lightsaber, igniting it as well. He never trusted Dooku, and to him, this was confirmation that he was right. The two powerful Jedi circled each other now, neither one of them making the first move. Yoda and the other council members only watched, and Yoda knew he has failed to keep the Jedi together. But as Dooku now moved in on Windu, Kiari Mundi ran at Dooku in order to aid Windu. But Anakin saw this, and he dove at Mundi, tackling him to the ground, not wanting him to interfere. And now Mundi and Skywalker began a duel, right as Windu and Dooku started their duel. Apple Ramses moved to aid Mundi, but Plo Koon intercepted him, and now those two were dueling. Plo decided to side with Dooku and Anakin, and this started a chain reaction as Jedi began to choose sides, Dooku or Windu. Fisto sided with Dooku, and he battled Coleman Cash while Shock T dueled Saisy Tin. Obi-Wan joined Dooku's side and was fighting Depa Balaba, and soon the Jedi didn't even know what they were truly fighting for. But as the sounds of dueling in these great halls increased, 
Yoda and other older masters worked on guiding the young Jedi away. This was the start of civil war if things could not calm down quickly. Huge groups of Jedi were being told to get out of the temple until this is resolved, but one of the young Jedi, Ahsoka Tano, new Padawan of Obi-Wan Kenobi, yelled at the young Jedi to stop. Ahsoka said that they all grew up being told that they were supposed to help people as Jedi, but now the council was fighting those who want to help the people in need. Sure, it is much more complicated than that, but to the young Jedi, it just looked like the council wasn't doing whatever they could to help the people in need of the Jedi. And so the wave of Jedi being escorted out of the temple reversed, and Yoda was being pushed back to the center. In the midst of the chaos, duels were going on, lightsabers clashing, but none of the Jedi actually wanted to kill each other. This was a civil war waiting to explode since the day Dooku returned to the Order, but the Jedi did not truly want to fight. But almost at once, Anakin cut both hands off Kiati Mundi as Dooku sliced through the shoulder and the thigh of Windu, sending the Jedi Master to the ground. And now both Anakin and Dooku held lightsabers to their adversaries as the rest of the fighting came to a stop. Windu looked up at Dooku and yelled at him to show the Jedi who he and Anakin truly are. And so Dooku simply nodded, then deactivated his lightsaber as Anakin did the same. They were showing who they truly were. They were Jedi. They just wanted to get this point across that they were Jedi, helping those in need. And now, finally, Yoda spoke. He demanded this come to an end, and soon said that Dooku was right. The Jedi have become too rigid, too stuck in their ways, too complacent, and he sees now that change is necessary. The Council always had its meetings alone in their tower, with all of the voices the same, most of the opinions the same, and allowed them become something Yoda never wanted, weak. And so Yoda announced he was stepping down. Gasps and murmurs filled the air. Windu realized as well that he was wrong with his place in all of this. So he also announced his resignation. Mundi was already in the medical bay, but he would do the same, along with Apo Rancis and Coleman Cash. And before long, Dooku and Skywalker would round up all of the Jedi willing to join them, and they would travel to Kadavo to help those in need and when they return, the Jedi Order would start to be reformed. And on the barren landscape of Kadavo, the Zagiri enslavers orchestrated their cruel roundup of everyone, quarreling the Togruta citizens without a worry. They knew the Republic and Jedi would take far too long to act. The air crackled with tension as families were torn apart, cries for mercy echoed through the streets. The slavers, their faces twisted with malice, showed no remorse as they forced the helpless Togrutas into cages their freedom snatched away in an instant. But when it seemed like all hope was lost, Jedi ships emerged suddenly from hyperspace. Like a beacon of hope amidst the dark, the Jedi emerged from the shadows, led by Dooku and Skywalker. Their lightsabers were blazing to life. They jumped to the ground and into the heart of the chaos, a whirlwind of determination and power. Anakin moved with unparalleled speed and agility, born of a decade of training under Dooku, his blue blade flashing as he deflected blaster bolts, struck down slavers with swift, decisive blows. Meanwhile, Dooku's calculated demeanor concealed the fierce strength within himself, his own saber carving through the ranks of their oppressors with precision. Many more Jedi, including Plo Koon and Obi-Wan, jumped to the ground to free the people in need of them. All around, Jedi and the slavers were clashing weapons and firing blasters as the Jedi were unleashing their strength. With each swing of their sabers, they cut through the chains of slavery, their actions a testament to the reforming order. The tide of battle turned in their favor, as the slavers were so caught off guard by the Jedi's intervention, they were faltering in their onslaught. In the end, the Jedi and the freed Togrutas joined together, forcing the Zagirians away to either retreat or die here, making it known their slave empire would never rise again. And soon enough, the Jedi would return to Coruscant as victors, yet the Chancellor was disappointed that they acted without his permission. And so Dooku decided, as the new head of the Jedi Order, that Chancellor Ainley team would need to be removed from office. This would not come from violence, but instead Dooku would spend some time with Anakin and Padme, helping them come together as heroes, and soon enough, Padme would call for a vote of no confidence in Ainley team, and Dooku would aid the new election, using his influential voice over the people to help Padme become the new Chancellor. As for the Jedi Order, Mace Windu, Kiari Mundi, and Yoda would all take some time away from the Order, while Apo Rancis and Coleman Cash would take on roles of advisors rather than council members. The council would be reformed with three constant rotating seats, 
giving people of all ranks and ages a chance to have their voices heard. The order would go through a necessary change, avoiding a huge civil war, and over the next few years, Grandmaster Dooku would work with Chancellor Amidala to restore the Republic back to its best, as the Jedi separated itself somewhat from the Republic, while still helping them when necessary. Anakin would continue to grow in strength, and continue to grow his relationship with Padme, but they would not have children, with Padme being so busy as Chancellor, and Anakin soon being an influential Jedi Master. Within some more time, Yoda and Windu would return as advisors, and Dooku would even allow Windu back on the Council once in a while, as conflicting opinions were good for the Council. In the end, Dooku did what he thought could only be done as a Sith, and eventually, he would even learn to speak with the ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn, which only assured him that he was right to choose the path of the Jedi. And folks, that is our story of what if Dooku never turned to the dark side. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to enter the 50,000 lightsaber Lego set giveaway, click the pinned comment down below. There will be two winners, one lightsaber winner, one Lego set winner. Go down below, and if you haven't entered, go do that. Winners will be announced the video after we hit 50k, so be sure to subscribe. And let's talk about today's video. I always love doing videos on Dooku. He's such an interesting character. Now, in the, you know, movies and in the novelization even of Revenge of the Sith and the Clone Wars, I think he's really far gone. Like, people say Dooku is character, um, he's kind of too violent or just too one-sided evil in the Clone Wars, which I agree and disagree with, but I think it really does show the, um, what happens when you take the path of the dark side, right? Because Dooku does it with noble intentions overall. He wants to make the Republic better, and he thinks the Jedi Order is just not good overall. So he joins the Sith in hopes of making a better galaxy, but the dark side corruption, like, you just can't avoid it. He becomes truly evil, and by the time of Revenge of the Sith, or even by the time of the Clone Wars, he's evil. Like, there's just not much that redeeming about him, which is why I really love Tales of the Jedi. Shows Dooku's character very well, but I wanted to do one where what if he stays in the light, of course, and ultimately gets what he couldn't do as a Sith, because... I like happy endings for this Dooku character, so hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought. I did enjoy doing a little Civil War action. Needed some, something to happen, so I think that makes sense. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.